Greetings. Um, <clears throat> today I'm going to talk about a film that I have loved ever since I was a kid. Um, I grew up watching this film as well as uh, the cartoon the reruns that were on uh, quite a bit in the 90s. Um, and that film is Beetlejuice. Not going to talk much about the uh, cartoon since, well, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the whole show. And though this Blu-ray does have three episodes of the animated series, um, as well as a music-only audio track, so you can watch the whole movie in complete silence, except when the music comes on. So, that's cool. Um, but yeah, this was one of the first Tim Burton films I ever watched in my life. I also saw... Batman, Batman Returns, which I'm sure isn't very shocking to all those of you who have watched my uh, channel uh, quite a bit over the years, since I enjoy Batman. Um, but also I watched uh, Mars Attacks, amongst other uh, Burton movies. But this was the one that I watched quite a bit. I always loved re-watching this whenever. Um, Michael Keaton obviously plays Beetlejuice. Um, Alec Baldwin and uh, Gina Davis play Adam and Barbara uh, Metlin, who uh, are taking a two-week vacation from uh, just their work, and uh, they're doing it at home. And um, they're constantly bothered by a, a real turn named Jane, who, uh, at least a few times, like, well, once and for Barbara, once for her, but it, you get the impression she keeps bothering him quite a bit. And um, because, you know, they have a big house and uh, they don't. Um, <clears throat> have a family and the f place is very big or she keeps saying like you know it would be great to have like a family move in there and well yeah well and uh they run a hardware store or, uh, at least uh adam does uh, though i'm sure barbara helps out quite a bit and um anyway uh they go to the hardware store. They go to come back home, and uh, uh, when they're about to cross a bridge to go and back to their home, a dog is walking through the road. So Barbara turns to hit the uh, to miss the dog, but yeah, to hit the dog. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be quite the movie. The whole thing wouldn't have really occurred. But you know, they go they crash through the wall of the of the bridge and then uh, dog is on like the one uh, like plank that's holding their car up and then when the dog gets off the car goes into the river and they drown um, but then they arrive back home and they have no clue how they got there or anything and they leave their home they're in some, like, other world, like other planet. And then, uh, uh, they could basically only stay in their home. Uh, and they find a book, uh, the book for the re recently deceased. And, uh, you also see little, uh, little commercials as, as well as little, uh, uh, little flyers for Beetlejuice. Michael Keaton, who says he's a bio-exorcist. And he can get the living out of one's home. Um, and, uh, the Dietzes move in. Um, uh, Charles, Delia, and, uh, <coughs> Lydia. 
steel yet is not uh, Lydia's biological mother, she's her stepmother, but yeah, Delia is an artiste, making sculptures and amongst other things, as well as um, uh, uh, Charles uh, had a breakdown at his job, he basically does real estate and how he's, you know, uh, trying to get his old boss to come to look at the town and how they could basically buy the whole town in this uh, Connecticut t uh, small little well, town but they're like yeah no don't do that it's, it's like yeah who cares about that um, there's also Otho one of the most hilarious uh, characters of the uh, of, of the film um, yeah and um, th this movie really is just hilarious. It's one that I've always loved since I was a kid. Um, and it's also cool to see the Metlands go to the, uh, you know, like the, uh, like, see what happens when you die, you know. You know, before you could go to the afterlife, there's all the stuff you got to figure out what to do and <laughs> having appointments with a, a, a caseworker that, that they're assigned to. It's, yeah, it, this is just a hilarious film. I just... If I keep going, I'll just be explaining the whole plot, which, you know, if you've seen the movie, you've no doubt already watched. <laughs> you know, if you see that you know what the plot is, and if you haven't, well, I think that's enough. <laughs> but, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, Chapter One's interest. Um, I have a DVD also. I uh, saw so there's a 4K version. That'd be interesting to see if there's anything else from it because uh, I got like the 25th anniversary uh, or the 20th anniversary uh, excuse me out of a DVD then some years later got the same version on uh, Blu-ray I, I uh, read that uh, Michael Keaton had lived a lot of his lines which Actually, doesn't surprise me, especially upon rewatching this. A lot of the stuff he says just seemed to be just out there. And um, this is apparently one of his favorite roles he's ever played. He does it very well. Uh, Wait on a writer as excellent as Lydia, as is Alec Baldwin and uh, Gina Davis as uh, the Metlins. Uh, Jeffrey Jones and Catherine O'Hara are also great um sylvia uh, uh, sydney as juno their their caseworker for the metlands is also great uh, everybody is fantastic um dick cavett is in this film cavett um he was a talk show host years and years ago and it's funny i i often forget he was in this especially since recently when you can watch a lot of his stuff on um, youtube i just kind of forgot and i remember just re-watching this recently and seeing like oh yeah, Dick Cavett is in this I just kind of forgot um, uh, Harry uh, Belfortone uh, has uh, uh, many songs of his uh, play throughout the film of course Danny Elfman did the music because well it's a Tim Burton film so it wouldn't be proper without him involved in the music But yeah, I just uh, I just love this film. It's it's one of my favorite movies. It's my favorite Tim Burton movie. Um, you know, it's one that I can just watch over and over. Um, has the F word, in, but it's rated PG. But of course, back then you could have the F word said like once or 
twice, as long as it's not sexual. Sort of like how these days it can be said in uh, a PG-13 film, as long as it's not said in a sexual manner. Um, if it is in its automatic rated R, even if it's said just once, that's how the rating system is. But yeah, of course by this point PG-13 was in full effect, so interesting how something like this just you know say it once and there you go but then again a year prior to this uh space balls came out and that also had the f word in it so anyway uh i saw up somewhere how the uh the complete animated series uh was out on dvd so that'd be kind of cool to Keep an eye on that and see if that goes down the price or, or maybe what, how much it is. I forget offhand. Might be quite reasonable. Uh, of course, since it's Halloween season now. Um, clearly, uh, C-3PO is the scariest character in uh, <coughs> Star Wars, hence why uh, he's uh, representing the month of October. Not, you know... Uh, Darth Vader or Emperor Palpatine, you know, uh, villains, but, you know, or just the Empire in general, but, you know, for Star Wars, you know, you gotta have 3 PO. he's frightening. Um, I also saw the, uh, sequel to this, saw last month, did not make a video, but that's because I kind of wanted to reserve judgment for it because I will say my initial thoughts of the sequel was I enjoyed it I thought it was a fine film great to see Michael Keaton Catherine O'Hara who went out a writer again um in these parts um but I want to just make sure I really enjoy this that sequel <clears throat> because you know sometimes when you say recency bias could have an effect and that could be very true though giving one's first impressions of a movie. You know, obviously that can change over time, but I, I think for a f sequel to a film that I love so much, it's kind of good to, when it comes back on, or comes out on Blu-ray and all that stuff, I'll get it and then re-watch it just to see how much do I really enjoy it? Do I really, really like it uh, as much as I currently do now? Or... You know, well, I still like it, but it's not as much. And it's like, just like it was like one of those uh, movies that, you know, it surprised me because it was good um, or, you know, fairly enjoyable. <clears throat> you know, something like that. You know, it, sometimes these belated sequels aren't really a hit. They're mostly misses. <clears throat> Top Gun Maverick was good. This was good. Or the sequel to this was good, at least. But. Again, I want to see if uh, down the line when it comes out again and I rewatch it, just to see whether or not my opinion is still the same or if it changes uh, one way or another. I do think, though, that the uh, sentiment that the cast, you know, all the performances being good, I think that will still be intact, but eh, who knows? <clears throat> it could be that one person in some in the background somewhere that just distract is very distracting you never know yeah. anyway i enjoy this film i it is my favorite tim burton movie um what do you think about beetlejuice do you enjoy it do you uh dislike it are you somewhere in between um are you someone like me who saw it at many points throughout their life um did you see it when it first came out um what was that experience like that would have been cool to see this in a theater um yeah, if this ever comes and uh, uh is, is ever re-released uh, near me um, in the theater i would definitely uh go and uh, see it uh yeah. Anyway, excellent movie. Uh, 
whether or not you enjoy the sequel is a, could be a different thing. Uh, uh, and you can also say whether you enjoyed it or of the sequel or not, if you've seen it, uh, or if you even have a, a, an interest in seeing it. I could see some people maybe not so much because again, sequel to Beetlejuice, which you know, uh, in the '90s they wanted to have one. Beetlejuice goes Hawaiian, and Kevin Smith was somebody who they were going to have uh, do some rewrites, but his reaction was, didn't we say all we needed with the first Beetlejuice? Must he go tropical? And if they went that route, I think many people will probably have the same sentiment. Um, but, you know, uh, there is uh, there is that, my, uh, my uh, overall thoughts. So, I hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all having a great day. Hope you're all having a great week. Uh, weekend. Hope your week was great. And I hope you'll have a great uh, week uh, next week. Yeah. So I'm going to be talking about quite a bit of horror films. Um, next time I'll probably speak about... Um, Dracula, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, to be precise. Um, somebody for a while asked me to do that, and I said that'd be kind of a good movie to rewatch uh, this Halloween season. Also, especially since you know uh, Nosferatu is coming out, so and uh, I want to get the original version of that film on uh, Blu-ray. Also, I want to see this new version. It looks pretty good. I made the lighthouse in the Northman made uh, the new Nosferatu. Um, so yeah, uh, basically this month I'll probably uh, talk quite a bit about uh, horror films or horror related in some way. Like Beetlejuice would be described as a horror comedy, for that matter. Uh, so it uh, Ghostbusters. Alrighty, um, I hope all of you are again well um please take care i hope again everybody is well uh, and uh if you enjoy horror movies of any kind um be they psychological or whatnot I enjoy all the movies uh of said uh genre that you enjoy, if that is your thing. If not, that's completely fine. Just watch whatever movies you like to watch. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, take care.